Yeah, I hit a second. I remember I was just on the phone crying because quarantine just hit. I was like, Mom. And my mom trying to like nicely tell me like, yeah, Tracy, like you gotta come back home. Be mad. Fuck all of these shit. Who got the biggest back? If it ain't about the money. Sorry, miss, I got the pack. My mind is on the cash. That's why I'm wanting only tax. Why you looking at my feet, little bitch? You can't afford these. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tracy Mitchell, VA, and I'm back again with another YouTube video. If you aren't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button now, hit that like button, and after this video is done, make sure you leave comments down below and all of that, because I'm giving y'all this video that I've been wanting to give y'all since, honestly, I started YouTube. But this is, the, this is the video I've been wanting to give the entire world since I moved to Atlanta. This video is really for the people out there that, um, for one, just like followed my journey. Um, from the outside, it looked perfect, but I want y'all to know it was not perfect at all. And I just wanna share with y'all the truth behind it and also the people out there that wanna move here and they um, they wanna know what I went through to get here. Well, this is my video that's gonna show y'all what happened, went down, all the details. But if you're new to my channel, my name is Tracy. Um, I'm a music journalist. I moved here for media. I graduated college from Old Dominion University to pursue my career as being a host, a host of a show. You know, I'm trying to get my Oprah Winfrey on, you know what I mean? So I moved here for all of those things. From a really small town of Virginia, and I knew nothing was gonna happen for me, so. I always knew I had to get out. I come from a really good family. So leaving my family for one was so, 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 so hard. Like, so hard. But it's kind of like when I left, I kind of like numbed up a little bit. I know I had to do what I had to do. And I knew if I kept living in Virginia, like I was gonna be miserable, y'all. Like when I lived in VA, I stayed locked up in my room. Like, I didn't want to see daylight. And I was happy with my family, but I was just so unhappy with my my life and the people around me like i didn't want to be friends with nobody i was over it i've been over it since i moved to va and i moved to va in 2001. i watched my earlier videos like i said i come from a military background so i'm used to moving around a lot and then just like imagine going your whole life moving around seeing the world to stopping in nowhere so i knew i had to get out of virginia so as i got older and of course i went off to college um i started off at community college and then i moved on to a four-year school i went to i graduated from a really popular four-year school but i didn't even go there for my career i mainly went there just to get out of my hometown like that's how bad i wanted to get out y'all two days before i moved to atlanta i got this book it says follow your dreams to remind me of why i'm here but basically in this book i'm writing down my whole journey before i left here to getting here to today like i still write in it today you know what i mean for two years before i moved to atlanta i tried to move here like i was trying and trying and it's like things just kept coming up like it's like the universe kept stopping me from leaving and then from there i was supposed to move with my boyfriend at the time that i was with for six years we were supposed to move here together and i'm glad that didn't happen y'all because like i said it was a toxic relationship so if something's toxic in va imagine what it could be in black hollywood i was traveling to atlanta every october for the last three years for a3c um it's a music festival conference situation and then i was like I was just like oh my god i want to move here i want to move here because it's Atlanta is a music city, it's a, it's mainly like a hip hop city and I work in the hip hop industry. I don't know, I just wanted to like live like a good life and I knew Atlanta was gonna give that to me. So I was really going to move in 20, um, tw late 2018 going into 2019. I was really, really gonna move and um, I had family issues and, but looking back on all these things, I can see like why it wasn't working out, you know what I mean? Cause it's like maybe God was trying to protect me and wait till I, I was like actually ready to make the move. So in December of 2019, I graduated college. Um, I got my degree in media studies. You know, I was finally like a grown woman. I was finally a college graduate. I was free. I didn't have chains back in VA, you know what I mean? Like I could go do whatever. I want. Then I told my parents, I was like, okay guys, like this is it's time. I'm going to move to Atlanta. I'm gonna pursue this career. I'm gonna make this happen. And they accepted it because you know, like I was a college graduate. You can't 
I've, I've completed like the thing that you guys always want to complete. It's done. I completed it. We cried and stuff like that. It was hard on them. But if they understood that how like sad I was in VA and how and how bad I wanted to get out. And I've always talked about getting out. You know what I mean? I met this girl on Twitter. She said that she was looking for a roommate or whatever. And I hit her up and was like, hey, I'm trying to move to Atlanta and stuff. You know, like I was just being like really like friendly with her. I was like, okay, this is cool. I already know a girl in Atlanta. So when I get there, I'm gonna have somebody. But um, she actually hit me up one day. She was like, hey, like we should move in together. And I was like, yeah, of course. Um, this makes my job easy. She said she was living in a house and there was another room. And she said, Tracy, you could take the room for 600, no credit check, no nothing. I was like, okay, hell yeah. So that was locked in. So like I said, um, after I graduated college, I knew I was moving to Atlanta. My date was February 8th, a few days after my birthday. So yeah, I really started saving money. Um, I started going really heavy with my um, journalism stuff, uh, trying to get my cash. I was able to stack up enough to get me through two months of rent. Um, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't the safest thing, y'all, but I took that chance. And like I said, I was desperate. So if you guys wanna know how much I gathered before I moved, <laughs> before I moved to Atlanta, let me tell y'all. Y'all do, the, I'm just gonna say like, y'all do the math. I was so broke, but I was so desperate. Done the money for the, um, the room and stuff like that. And then just like fast forward a couple days later, as it was getting closer to the move-in date, she hit me up and she was like, oh, nah, never mind. I'm having beef with the people in the house. So can we, um, we got to do something else. We got to find another place. And I was like, oh my God, like I can't get an apartment. I never had an apartment under my name. Just like, we were just like figuring something out real quick. Like in one day we were figuring out something. She was making calls. I was making calls. Like we were just trying to get somewhere to stay together. Thankfully, like she came through. She said her, um, one of her family members knew somebody that had an extra room in their house out in Lawrenceville. Y'all, like I said, Lawrenceville is like an hour from downtown Atlanta, but I was desperate. So I was like, boom, there it is. I don't know these people. I don't know where Lawrenceville is. I'm not, I don't have any family members from Georgia, but I was like, I gotta do it. Cause this is like, I gotta take this chance. I gotta take this risk. It's now, it's really now or it's never. So after that was locked in, um, it was almost that time to move in. And I honestly remember the night going into my moving day. It was a happy day, but it was a happy day because we kind of, my family kind of had to like celebrate me leaving, you know what I mean? I don't know why I'm getting emotional just thinking about that day, but whatever. But yeah, it was just kind of like, it was like a bittersweet kind of day, you know what I mean? Like, my sister's leaving, my daughter's leaving. And like I said, y'all, I come from a really good family. Uh, we have a beautiful home back in VA, like, huge house like i don't even know how many rooms you know what i mean like we come i come from like a really good life beautiful room i had my own bathroom i didn't get any sleep at all that night i know i had to get up at two o'clock in the morning the next day and i just remember it being cold and we're packing up the car and i'm sorry i'm getting emotional i think my period's coming y'all and I couldn't get any sleep and at the same time I was really excited because it's like I knew I was stepping into something new like this is something new I've never been out on my own um shit a girl barely ever I've never driven that far um by myself I didn't get any sleep that night not even just the slight like I did not get any sleep that night so when I when I went to bed I was just laying there like scrolling the timeline and then 2 a.m. hit, I got right in the car and drove eight hours to Georgia by myself. Two stops at the gas station from Virginia to Georgia. I drove eight hours by myself. Honda Civic was only packed with a mirror, my TV, which I got right here. And um, so my mirror, my TV, and clothes. That is all I had in that car. The mirror that my ex-boyfriend got me, by the way, if you're watching this, that's the only thing I kept from you. Cause oh, if y'all see my Instagram, y'all see that big wall mirror? Yeah, that's the mirror. I was not about to leave VA without that mirror. I would drive by myself, playing music. I played music the whole way. Had the windows open, breezy. Y'all, and when I cross, I will never forget like how I felt when I crossed the, um, <clears throat> When I crossed the border, when it said like, welcome to Georgia, I actually had a 
like I actually have like all of these moments written in this book right here I should actually write a book one day off of this diary but yeah it's kind of like my diary slash manifestation book for ya y'all I cried my new life I'm never driving back to VA like this is it you know what I mean like this is it got to Lawrenceville and I pulled up to the house the house was really small like it was a small ranch house but it was cute like it was a cute it was a small ranch house um it only had like three bedrooms there was like 10 people living in the house but and i had my own room and honestly it was small and like i said guys i come from a really like good life back in virginia we had a big ass house so that just shows how much i was willing to like chase after my career like i left all of that just to go to this um ranch house i went from having my own bathroom to having to share a bathroom with 10 people. And on top of that, the water, the, I just remember the water got cold like after a few seconds. I never had to deal with that. The water would get cold and there was bugs. There'd be bugs in my room and stuff. I wouldn't kill them. Like I would just let them just, <laughs> I will let them just go. Like laughing about all these things because I don't know, like I don't live like that no more clearly. Like, but I don't know. Like it was just nice to go from having it all to struggling. Like. <laughs> y'all probably looking at me like damn like why the fuck is she smiling like no like it was actually a really like beautiful experience the people that i moved in with like i kind of grew like to really love them like when i after i moved here i went to go check on them um i got their daughter's gifts you know what i mean because i was just like i really appreciated them like i don't know and it's like it's kind of like god placed me there too because they were like um a very religious um, Spanish family by the way they only spoke Spanish so I would have to and I'm, I have a Spanish background like I'm Spanish too but it's like damn I can't even speak that much Spanish but I was speaking Spanish every day so it was kind of like God was like bringing me back to my roots and kind of like centering me and putting me like a girl was crying again though but yeah the girl that was there um to go through the store pretty quick she was there and me and her like of course like as i like as i expected we hit it off really really fast like i really saw that girl like me and her were like really becoming best friends like her room was right in front of my in front of mine and she was barely ever home she was out with guys or whatever um but when she was with me like me and her would have like really like deep talks and stuff we were connecting like this uh, we all we even went on a trip together to um ciaa weekend like me and her were really clicking she was also working at a studio and she was like you come work with me there um it wasn't a paid situation but it was um it was nice to be working studio because like i said i'm a music journalist so i was like okay like i get to be in like my you know my vibe or whatever me and her were just really clicking really hitting off and i really like grew to love her because it's like I have respect to her because one, it's like um, she let me work at the studio with her. Um, two, she found me the house if it wasn't for her. Honestly, like today, I can say it right now, if it wasn't for that girl, I wouldn't be here right now. You know what I mean? But to fast forward, me and her fell out over the most wackiest shit. You know what I mean? Like I kind of hinted it at the beginning of you know my blocking series or whatever, to where I said people will kind of like take advantage and like use you. It's like we fell out because. Um, I don't know like I was really thinking like me and her were, were friends but in reality she was she only kind of like took me in because she knew I was a music journalist and I could open doors for her because she you know she had her music career going on like damn like that was my first my first encounter with an Atlanta girl and that Atlanta video that's almost at a thousand views right now it comes from her it's just what I keep preaching y'all be my best friend for life you know what I mean we're about to be in this together we about to be rags to riches you know what I mean but it's like nah like reality hit me it hurt me so bad like so our friendship only lasted a month, y'all. All of February, the end of February, then coronavirus hit. Atlanta was on lockdown from March to, from March to, I think July, like Atlanta was on lockdown. Um, so I was stuck in that one bedroom of the house, just depressed. And like I said, I got that all in here. Like I was just depressed because I'm new to Atlanta. I just got here. Me and this girl that I thought we'd be best friends, we fell out. I don't speak in, I don't speak Spanish. I don't have any money. So I was trying my best to get myself up, you know, like I had a in a two-month span, I had a total of four, I think four jobs in Atlanta. 
um, at the first one I worked at a massage place the um, owner was hitting on me like you, there was like sexual energy I was getting off of him he was an old man he worked at a grocery store uh, where else where else I work at I forgot where else I worked out but y'all like <laughs> it was hard and I was doing job applications people weren't calling back from the jobs I really wanted I got to such a low point like how am I going to even pay the rent here how am I how am I how am I gonna pay for food um even if y'all look back on my Instagram like you can see like the change from when I moved here to now it's like you could tell I had no I didn't have no money back then and for a split second y'all I was like I gotta go back I was like Tracy you're you're way over your head and I'm somebody that's big on faith but I hit a moment to where I was like nah Tracy stop being so damn positive like stop being so positive think that this is really gonna work out for you you know what I mean and I'm sorry I'm about to cry yeah I hit a second I remember I was just on the phone crying because quarantine just hit I was like mom and my mom trying to like nicely tell me like yeah Tracy like you gotta come back home last job I had was the grocery store I lasted a total of three days I could not do it I was like I'm not putting if I'm doing something and I'm working on it I have to be passionate about it you know what I mean I have to be putting my God-given mind my God-given talent into it I'm fucking bagging groceries and I just quit she was she pulled me to the side she was just like Tracy um, we had this problem with you we got a problem with this problem with you and I was like, all right I'm leaving and that's it I went home and then I was like all right, all right Tracy what you going what you gonna do you know what I mean what you gonna do and then I thought I was like, okay Tracy you were making money off of this journalism stuff but maybe if you try to start a business start promoting yourself and pushing yourself maybe you could really start making some money y'all the first month I put my big boy pants on my hustle baby pants on which is my brand by the way once I put them pants on made in that month consistently <laughs> consistently y'all missed out on is that I was um I didn't I know I didn't want to live in the house no more um it wasn't the family um but I just knew like I needed more for myself I was making enough money to start saving up for an apartment off of my business and um I don't know how to say it so from March being depressed all those months going by to June um, I got I got approved for this apartment I got approved for this apartment and I just remember like seeing her um, for the last time the girl um, I was at the kitchen table in the other house and then I was eating and then she just she was just like kind of her voice kind of sounded like a little bit um like it was like cracking and then she was like congratulations on the house Tracy because you know we were supposed to move in together we were only supposed to be in that house for um up till June and then moving together and she was still there and I'm sure that was like hard for her like damn the girl that I got to Atlanta just got her first apartment and I've never even had my first apartment but what I'm saying this I'm not like rubbing her face but it's just like it's just crazy like how life happens you know what I mean you know and I was just like I stopped eating and I was just like you know that was like really that's really big of you to say you know what I mean if that was me and other shoes I probably wouldn't wouldn't want her to see my face let me see how I found my apartment so I was like checking apartments.com you know like knocking them off here and there whatever and this apartment I got right now I actually didn't find on apartments.com that's the crazy part um i was actually just driving and i don't know why it was just kind of like glowing to me and i was like let me just go in here and see if they got any places available and they did yeah so i guess that was kind of like god telling me like this is gonna be this is the first perfect apartment for you and next year guys next year i'm gonna have my high-rise condo i am playing no games and if it's not my high-rise condo y'all it's gonna be a luxury apartment and these are just the things i manifest going from going from losing this girl um to not having no money to not having a place to stay like i look back on those days a lot just like i'll be in this apartment just like thinking like damn like you didn't think you could do it and this moment in my life i'm honestly never gonna forget because i easily i like, really could have gave up i really could have just went back home but if i think about it y'all if i would have if i would have went back home and just looking at my Instagram now and like the experiences I had, I would have never got to experience those things. I don't really know how to end this video because everybody's situation or their move to Atlanta is different, you know what I mean? But let me tell y'all, when I was living in that house, not only was I consistently writing 
in this book right here but i built myself an altar and i would like put flowers on there i would um put candles around and stuff like that and i would get on my knees and pray and i was doing that every single day in that house i don't do it no more i need to i need to do it i might use that table over there um but i was praying i was praying for my apartment i was praying that god puts good people in my life to look over me and i was praying for strength i was praying y'all i was on my knees praying and um just to uh just to wrap up this video i'm not telling you how much money you need in your pockets when you move here but if your story is similar to mine you need to um be very very much mentally prepared uh because you're leaving everything that you know um if you don't have any friends here you know you gotta start it you gotta start all over again and this um city is very much different from from a small town it's definitely very much different you know what i mean and it's a lot to adjust to and you gotta be ready you gotta be mentally 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 ready and along with being mentally ready you need to have your faith very much strong that's what i want you to get out this video guys um so I hope y'all learned a little bit more about me and my journey and my move to Atlanta. I'm about to go out and if you guys need any advice or just anybody to talk to about your move to Atlanta or anything that's going on, um, please feel free to hit my DM, hit my email, um, leave a comment down below. Yes, leave a comment down below about your experience moving to Atlanta or what you're afraid of um, and if this story resonated with you at all. Once again, guys, it's Tracy Mitchell, VA. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have so much more content on the way. <laughs> See y'all next video.